Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest comes to us from the organization which received the well-deserved Distinguished Service Award in 2023. It is the organization that he leads. Five years ago, the American Legion prevailed in one of the most important First Amendment cases in Supreme Court history. Thanks to our friends at the First Liberty Institute, veterans can enjoy their First Amendment freedom as, their, as they memorialize their fallen comrades. First Liberty is also largely responsible for a number of other important Supreme Court victories protecting our religious freedoms. The award that they are about to present is named in honor of our dearly departed friend, the American Legion's longtime national judge advocate, Philip P. Underdonk. With us today to present that award is the Naval Academy graduate and the senior cat consul for First Liberty Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Roger Byron Esquire. Good afternoon. You know, for, um, for a lot of years now, there have been legal attacks in our nation's courts against some of our nation's most beloved traditions. Things like the Pledge of Allegiance, our national motto, in God We Trust, and even our veterans' memorials, at least the veterans' memorials that use religious words or religious symbols or images. And the threat posed by these attacks is very real. And so for many years, First Liberty Institute has partnered with the American Legion, has represented the American Legion, to meet these attacks head on and defend our traditions in the courts. We've had a lot of great victories, and it was five years ago this summer that we secured the key victory that turned the tide in the entire campaign. A lawsuit had been filed by a hostile legal group against the Bladensburg World War I Veterans Memorial in Bladensburg, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C. It was a large freestanding cross that had been erected primarily by the American Legion in its early days. In fact, if you look at the slide there, you can see the Legion's emblem at the cross's intersection. It had also been erected by local bereaved mothers of men who went to war and did not come home. It stood there for about 100 years, unmolested, reminding everyone that saw it of the price of that horrendous war. And then this group decided that because it's in the shape of a cross, it should be removed. It did not belong where it was. As soon as the lawsuit was filed, the American Legion, represented by the attorneys from First Liberty Institute and Jones Day, intervened in the lawsuit. And for five years, we fought to defend the Peace Cross, as the locals call it. We were able to get the case in front of the Supreme Court, and we won. We not only saved the Peace Cross, we were able to get the much needed protections in the law for the nation's other veterans memorials and other traditions. But it gets better. Two years ago, First Liberty secured another win in the Supreme Court, a tremendous win, based uh, in some part, or importantly, in large part, on the legal precedent set by the American Legion case. There was a high school football coach in Bremerton, Washington, named Joe Kennedy. He'd been a career Marine. He retired as a gunnery sergeant before he went into coaching football. And it was his conviction at the end of every game, while the players were leaving the field, he would walk to the 50-yard line, take a knee, and give a brief prayer of thanks to God. He would do that after every game. One day the school came and told him he couldn't pray any longer. It was no longer allowed. Coach Kennedy, however, he knew what his convictions were and he knew what he had to do. So he continued to pray and he lost his coaching position because of it. He could no longer be a coach because he prayed. We took up Coach Kennedy's case we got his case in front of the Supreme Court, and again, we won. The 
The legal precedent set by the American Legion case was an important part of that win. And we won not only for Coach Kennedy and others like him. His case put even more protections in the law for our nation's beloved traditions, like our veterans' memorials. So that with the American Legion case in place, with the Kennedy case in place, our nation's veterans' memorials and other traditions now have more protections in the law than they've had in at least the last 50 years, if not more than they've ever had. So now we're going to show you a brief video about the Honor Donk Award, and I'm going to present to you this year's recipient. Since our nation's founding, America's veterans have built monuments and memorials to honor our service members. But today, there's a coordinated effort to tear these memorials down. Together, First Liberty Institute and the American Legion are leading the fight to keep them standing. For example, when the Mount Soledad Veterans Memorial came under fire, we were there to protect it. When the Mojave Desert Veterans Memorial was attacked, we were there to fight for it. When the Bladensburg Peace Cross was threatened, we were there and won a Supreme Court victory that changes how judges will regard similar cases in the future. When the national motto and the pledge were challenged over In God We Trust and Under God, we were there so our children and grandchildren would be able to continue these time-honored traditions. Freedom, especially religious freedom, has a great champion in the American Legion. So every year, First Liberty Institute honors a champion of freedom with the Philip B. Onderdonk Jr. Religious Liberty Award. Some give trophies, First Liberty gives a rifle. Ever since the Civil War, veterans demonstrating the highest dedication to duty have been presented with an engraved Henry repeating rifle. This fully functional firearm is a special military tribute edition made with fine walnut with an adjustable sight and a 20 inch octagonal barrel. The highly polished receiver features a 24 karat gold bald eagle bearing a shield in recognition of service to our great country. The other side depicts the iconic Statue of Liberty and Liberty Bell, enduring reminders that America is a beacon of freedom for the world and for our citizens. On the forearm, a flowing banner and shield proudly salute our military heroes. The stock is laser etched with the Underdonk Award emblem, uniquely commemorating a champion of our religious freedom. You know, there's nothing more American than a Henry repeating rifle. And there's no greater champion of religious freedom than this year's recipient of the Philip B. Onderdonk Jr. Religious Liberty Award. First Liberty salutes your dedication to duty in the service of freedom. thank Henry Repeating Arms who donates this rifle every year for this award. Henry is a big, yes, let's give them a hand. So Henry is a friend of religious freedom and certainly a friend of the American Legion. These victories that we're celebrating here, they're only possible because people like the American Legion, people like Joe Kennedy, when the opportunity is there and the need is there, they make the hard decision, they take the hard road, and they stand and they defend the First Amendment. They defend our religious freedoms. And that's what we do with this award. We honor those who make that stand. The Knights of Columbus is a worldwide uh, fraternal organization, a service-oriented organization that's affiliated with the Catholic Church. One of their core values is patriotism. And one of the ways that they demonstrate that patriotism is that every year on Memorial Day, they have special masses to honor those that have fallen in service to the nation. And it's common for them to hold these masses in the cemeteries where the fallen are buried. Uh, Knights of Columbus Petersburg Council 694 from Petersburg, Virginia, 
has held a Memorial Day Mass at the Poplar Grove National Cemetery every year since at least the 1960s. They've done it without incident, without problem, and with the support and cooperation of the National Park Service until last year, when seemingly out of the blue, they were denied their permit to hold their annual Mass. The explanation they were given was that under a new policy, uh, religious ceremonies were now considered prohibited demonstrations and were no longer allowed in the National Cemetery. So under this policy, the Knights could no longer have a religious ceremony to honor the fallen who were buried in that cemetery. Obviously, well, there's a problem with that. The Knights came to American Legion, and uh, attorneys, uh, well, the Knights came to First Liberty Institute. They should have come to the American Legion as well. And attorneys from First Liberty and uh, from McGuire Woods, we just sent a letter to the Park Service explaining to them what had happened, explaining to them how this new policy violated the First Amendment and other federal law, and hoping that just some weird mistake had happened. And this would be cleared up fairly quickly. Unfortunately, we were told by the Park Service that no, that was a new policy and that, uh, that masses or religious services would no longer be allowed in the cemetery. And so at that point, the Knights had a decision to make. They could take the easy way. They could slink off. They could forget their convictions. They could forget their tradition and just let it die. Or they could take the hard road. They could stick to their convictions. They could stand up and defend the First Amendment and defend their religious freedoms. And we work with the Knights for a little over 10 years now. And we found that, like the American Legion, the Knights is filled with men of action. So the Knights chose the hard road. They chose to stand up and defend the First Amendment. So just a few days before Memorial Day this year, we filed suit against the National Park Service and some officials to hopefully save this tradition and allow the Knights to be able to continue to hold their masses in the cemetery. We got a hearing scheduled just literally days before Memorial Day, the Thursday before Memorial Day. And then the morning of the day of the hearing, I think it was three hours before we would appear in court, the National Park Service did the right thing. They relented and they granted the permit for the Knights of Columbus to continue to hold their Memorial Day Mass in Poplar Grove National Cemetery. The picture you see there on the screen is from this year's Mass. That is Father Gino Rossi, the pastor of St. Peter's Church in Petersburg and the chaplain of Council 694. And behind him there you see a portion of Poplar Grove National Cemetery home to thousands of graves of the fallen. So because the Knights were willing to take the hard road, because they stood to defend the First Amendment, we were able to fight for them. And with just their lawsuit just beginning, secure them the victory to continue to exercise their beliefs and to honor the fallen in accordance with their convictions. And because of that, because of their stand, it's my pleasure to present this year's Philip B. Andrew Donk Jr. Religious Liberty Award to Knights of Columbus Council 694 of Petersburg, Virginia. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to thank Roger and Hiram for the hospitality that have given me the last couple of days to be here with you. On behalf of uh, Patrick Kelly, our Supreme Knight for the State Officers of Virginia, on behalf of the 694 officers, our past Grand Knight Joe LeClerc, Grand Knight John Blaha, Treasurer Tim Tatro, and Chaplain Father Gino Rossi, 
We'd like to thank the American Legion for this invitation to be here today, and for First Liberty Institute for their defense of liberty and of religious freedom that allowed us to have that mass on Memorial Day in Dinwiddie County, Virginia. We'd also like to thank the Henry Firearm Company for such a beautiful award, and for Governor Glenn Youngkin and Attorney General Jason Mirez, who also did, a, I believe, a brief for us uh, in this case. So we had lots of backing. Know and understand that this award will be placed in a, in a place of honor in our council home for all to see. And I'd like to uh, just quote a line from uh, Father Gino Rossi's homily that day, uh, that Memorial Day Mass, and he said this, some adversaries to religion freedom might look at the Knights of Columbus and think, ah, these old nice men aren't going to cause any problems. To them, I would respond, don't poke the bear. We might seem nice, and we are, but ferocious in our commitment. We only get more fierce when pushed. Persecution causes multiplication and growth in zeal. And we have 2,000 years of martyrs who evidence this. And I thought it was a great line from his homily. And I'd like to share one more story with you. It happened this morning. And I'd like um, John Polzine, if John Polzine from Wisconsin is here, if he'd stand up. John? Yeah, I met John this morning at breakfast, about 7.30 this morning, and he started up a conversation with me. I'm from Virginia, he's from Wisconsin. And he said, uh, are you a veteran? And I told him, yes, I'm a former Marine, hoorah, and Semper Fi to my Marine brothers. And uh, he said, are you a member of the American Legion? And I said, no, I'm not. I said, but maybe I should think about it. Well, John very quickly reached into his back pocket, pulled out his wallet, opened it up, and pulled out a little form. And he said, this is the application for membership in the American Legion. And so we paid for our breakfast. We went over to a table, sat down. I filled out that application. I paid my $35 membership fee. And I believe I might be the newest member of the American Legion here in the hall today. John must have been a Boy Scout because he was prepared. I think their motto is, be prepared. Uh, thank you, John, for the conversation and for the opportunity to join this wonderful organization. And we'd like to thank you all again, and may God bless you all.